Hi, I'm Ellen from the Chili Dog. Entrelock is an interesting knitting technique. Instead of working back and forth in long rows across the entire width of your fabric, instead you knit in small sections or short rows to create rectangles that seem to be interlaced or woven together. Entrelock is my favorite type of technique because it creates a complicated looking design that's much simpler to knit than it appears. If you can knit, purl, and pick up stitches, you can do entrelock. Entrelock begins with either a foundational row of base triangles or base rectangles. Using base rectangles gives your fabric a zigzagged or scalloped looking edge. Using base triangles would give your fabric a straight edge. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to work the base rectangles like the ones I have used in my Bon Voyage shawl. Let's get started. Since each rectangle in the foundational row is cast on after the previous rectangle is complete, long tail cast ons won't work for base rectangles because the yarn tail will only be available to cast on stitches for the first rectangle in the series. Instead, I'm going to use a cable cast on for my base rectangles. If you are completely new to this cast on, I will include a link in the video description to my basic cable cast on tutorial that gives a more detailed demonstration of the cast on itself and explains some variations of the technique. You can start a cable cast on with a slip knot or you can use a loop and today I'm just going to use a loop. So I have my working yarn here at the back of the needle, the tail at the front. I'm going to wrap the tail back and over the working yarn and just hold it in place so that that first stitch doesn't fall off my needle as I'm casting on. And then I'm going to cast on 14 stitches because that's how many stitches my pattern calls for. How many stitches you cast on would depend on the pattern you're using. So I'm going to cast on my stitches and I am transferring my stitches purl wise without twisting them as I'm going along. That's just kind of my personal preference because I like the way that looks. It would also be just fine to twist them before you transfer them. So I'm going to cast on my 14 stitches. Before I transfer the very last stitch, I am going to bring my yarn forward between the two needles and that helps your stitches so that they don't leapfrog over each other and it also continues this nice slanted twist here at the very edge of your work. So my yarn's forward and then I'm going to transfer that last stitch. After the last stitch has been transferred, it's time to start working the first rectangle. So you're going to start with a right side row and you're going to work in your stitch pattern, whatever it may be, for twice as many rows as there are cast on stitches. So since I have 14 stitches cast on, I am going to work 28 rows in my pattern. And then I'll be back to show you how to cast on the next rectangle. So I've finished knitting my first base rectangle and it has twice as many rows up and down as it does stitches across. So I have 14 stitches here and 28 rows here. One thing I like to do at this point before I cast on any more stitches is to just clip a little locking stitch marker onto the right side of my work. And this is just going to help me keep my orientation as I'm knitting. So I know when this stitch marker comes up and I can see it, I know that this is the right side of my work, not the wrong side. Now we're ready to cast on the 14 stitches for the next rectangle. There are a couple options here. I'm going to continue using the cable cast on just like I did for the first rectangle, but there's a couple ways to get started. Two of them I don't like, and I'm going to show you why here. 
and then we'll continue with the one that I do prefer. When you're doing the cable cast on, you would think that the way you do it, the most obvious way it would be to insert your right needle here in between these last two stitches, make a new stitch and cast it on. It will work. However, I don't necessarily favor this way to get started because you can see here, it kind of stretches out in between the last stitch of the rectangle and the second to last stitch of the rectangle. And you can end up having a kind of unsightly gap or hole right there in your knitting. The other way to start a cable cast on that is kind of the most common sense is to just knit that stitch to cast on and then slip it over. And again, by doing that, you end up stretching out this very last stitch of the rectangle and you will likely end up getting some sort of weird little gap or hole right there in your knitting. What I like to do instead is when I'm casting on this first stitch of the next rectangle is to actually work through the back loop of the last stitch and then cast on my stitch. And it kind of looks like it's stretched out here, but when we meet this stitch again later in our work, we'll be working through this front leg so it will actually twist back and close up any weird gaps and holes that might happen there. So when I'm casting on my rectangles, I always work the first stitch through the back loop or the back leg of the last stitch on my needle. And then again, I'm slipping my stitches over purl wise without twisting them. So I've cast on my first stitch. I'm going to continue casting on my remaining 13 stitches again, using the cable cast on. Whoops, I got twisted around there. So I'm going to cast on the rest of my stitches just using the cable cast on. Just like before, before I transfer over that last stitch, I like to go ahead and put, bring my yarn between the two needles forward and then transfer it. And it just keeps those last two stitches that I've cast on from leapfrogging over the top of each other. So now we have 14 stitches from our first rectangle and the 14 stitches we've cast on to work our next rectangle. So now we can go ahead and work that next rectangle. The one thing to remember is as you're getting started, you need to stop after 14 stitches and not just knit across all of these. So I'm going to work a couple rows here and kind of speed things up just so you can see what happens as I'm working the next rectangle in my stitch pattern. And again, you would go ahead and knit in whatever stitch pattern your, your pattern would call for. Once I've worked across the 14 stitches before I get to that next rectangle, I'm going to turn my work to the wrong side and then work back across these 14 stitches in my stitch pattern. The 14 stitches that are left from the first rectangle, we're not going to do anything else with at this point. So we'll work across our rectangle again just continuing working across these 14 stitches in your stitch pattern back and forth until you've completed the next rectangle. When you get to the end turn your work over. One quick note here, as I am still working the stitches for my second rectangle, you'll notice that after I have got a few rows into that second rectangle, there becomes a noticeable gap here in between the second rectangle that I'm working and the first one that was on my needles.
that gap pretty much makes it impossible to accidentally work across the second rectangle and then continue working the first rectangle. When you see that big gap, you'll know that it's time for you to turn your work and go back the other direction across your needle and across the rectangle. After your next rectangle is complete, again, with twice as many rows as there are stitches across, you can continue and go ahead and cast on the next rectangle and then knit the rectangle and then cast on another and then knit it and then cast on another and knit it. And you can go ahead and continue working as many base rectangles as you like or as many as your pattern requires. Eventually, you'll end up with, look, with what looks like a garland of these little curled rectangular flags. In the next lesson, I'll show you how to begin working back across the other direction of your entrelock, beginning with a right hand triangle. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Until we stitch again, happy knitting!